Hey guys, it's Chris with CNM Aquatics. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for checking it out. We talk about pretty much anything reef aquarium related. Um, corals, we do product reviews. Today we're gonna to talk about aquarium heaters. So if you're new, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, it really helps out a lot. And for everybody else, welcome back. Like I said, we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about aquarium heaters in this video. Um, and this is a subject that's kind of personal with me. Uh, short story, I had a, a uh, BioCube set up years ago and everything was good, corals growing perfect. I had a lot of corals in that BioCube, it was packed. And I skipped on the heater. I had a cheap, probably a $20 cheap heater in that aquarium and went to bed, woke up the next day and the corals looked absolutely terrible. Um, what had happened is the thermostat in the heater failed and it cooked the aquarium all night. When I tested the temperature in the morning, it was up around 102, 104 degrees, something like that. And I lost about half the coral in that aquarium, which totaled up to around right around a thousand dollars in coral so it was not worth it for me to skimp on the heater and i learned a very valuable lesson there so i tell everybody if there is one piece of equipment in your aquarium setup that you spend more money on and get something decent it's it's the heater spend the money on the heater up front for your system and it'll pay for itself so there's several different types of aquarium heaters. You have submersible heaters, you have under gravel heaters, you have inline heaters. We're gonna talk mainly about just submersible heaters. They're probably the most popular type in the aquarium hobby these days. And that's what this guy is here. So he's made of glass. This is a 100 watt submersible heater with the dial on top. So you put it in the aquarium and you set it to whatever temperature you want, temperature you want, and you have yeah, suction cups, you stick it to the glass, you plug it in, and that's it. And this here, this is a cheaper heater that I do not use in my systems. I'll show you later in the video what I do with my old heaters that still work. But I don't use these anymore um, for several reasons. One is the glass. It's never happened to me, but I have known people you know, a rock shelf shifts in the aquarium and falls and hits this glass and can crack it and break it, which causes issues. I don't know exactly what's in these. I think this one's just a heating element, a wire inside, but you don't want these breaking in your aquarium, leaking anything, shocking the aquarium if this thing cracks open. Um, you can shock your fish and corals and kill them that way you can shock yourself so i stay away from the glass ones they do have other ones that are made of plastic that kind of gets away from that but i don't use the glass ones anymore because i worry about them getting hit or bumped or, or cracked with a rock or something like that so i don't use them anymore and the cheap heaters like the story I told you with the bio cube, the thermostat going out on them, and it was a heater like this one, not this exact one, but the thermostat failed and the temperature rose in the aquarium and it didn't kick off and it ran all night. And that was a hard one to swallow. Lost a, a whole bunch of coral that night. So I learned my lesson with heaters and I urge you guys to do the same. Just don't buy a cheap heater for your setup. It's not worth it. Invest the money into something better. We spend all kinds of money on, you know, fancy protein skimmers and media reactors and whatever, but the heater is one thing that can fail and can ruin a system and it can kill things in your system. So don't buy a cheap one. Moral of the story, I learned my lesson. So learn from, learn from me and don't buy a cheap heater. I will show you what I am using now. And currently I have, I have a total of 13 aquarium setup and I am running 
these um, aqua top titanium heaters in all my systems so this particular one is 200 watts and I really like these heaters for several reasons first off is the construction of the heater what it's made of here the titanium it's very solid and I have bumped these in the aquarium I, I have had rocks not really fall on them but hit them and they're they're very very solid heaters they're not gonna crack and they're not gonna shatter like glass um, I like you got the suction cups you can stick it to the glass or the acrylic the side of the aquarium I like how both ends of the heater they have a really thick rubber foot on the head and the bottom for padding so if they get wedged in somewhere you don't really have to worry about it and it, it's sealed up very nicely so this heater here is 100% fully submersible and it's all sealed whether you're putting it into a sump or directly in the aquarium it's fully submersible you don't have to worry about that and they, they don't look too bad um, the shape and the design of it the the metal look they, they look pretty good in the system and you you can get this is a fairly new one I pulled out to show you guys but you can see a little bit starting down here you, you it, they'll get covered in covered in coralline algae and, and they blend in um, if you do get an accumulation of detritus or snails or algae on these I do take them out and clean them periodically algae whatever just to keep them clean I try to keep all my equipment clean because it works properly that way and functions longer so I like these they're fairly indestructible um, I could see you maybe denting or scratching this but you're not gonna crack it open and, and have to worry about that issue so this part goes into the aquarium and I just want to say that like I'm not sponsored by aqua top or anything I'm not getting paid for this video I just really like these heaters and it's what I'm using I've been running them for probably six or seven years in a couple of the systems now and I've never had one fail I've never had an issue with any of them so <clears throat> the heater comes up to a control box here and this is outside the aquarium and it's mounted outside somewhere and then it's got a primp a temperature probe that comes off and goes into your aquarium and what I like about this is say you have this heater in the sump area under your aquarium to heat the water you run this temperature probe up to the main display and it's taking the temperature reading from the actual aquarium up top where all your livestock is where a lot of other heaters have the thermostat built into this part so then you're getting a temperature reading in the sump and it's heating the sump to your desired temperature and by the time the water you know gets pumped up to the main display in, in the aquarium there's going to be a couple degrees difference in your temperature so you're not keeping your aquarium at the exact temperature you think you are and i would recommend taking some type of external thermometer i've used my wife's you know cooking thermometers clean them off and put them in, in the aquarium and get a temperature reading if you do have a heater in your sump not in the main display see what the temperature difference is because if you don't hey if you're not reading the temperature from the display tank i guarantee it's it's not the same as what the heater thinks it's putting it out so it comes back to this control box here and this is mounted on the outside of the aquarium and what i really like is i'll show you on some of the systems here you get a digital readout on this control box so you always know what temperature this probe is reading so you have a pretty good idea of what your aquarium your temperature is at whether you're you know vacuuming or you're cleaning the glass on your aquarium it's just super convenient super nice just to glance and see the temperature is stable or, or where you want it so i don't have to be checking the temperature of the aquarium every day i can just look at this box and it, and it tells me and that's super convenient super nice and these are super easy to use you got a power on power off button and then you select what temperature you want the heater to heat to and that's it 
set it and pretty much forget it. And there's a little light, little red light here, it says heater, and there's a, here's a green light that says power. So this is plugged in, the green light's on, you know the system has power, and then when the heater is actually heating, this red light comes on here, so you know that it is actually in heating mode and heating the aquarium, so you know when it's heating. But I can't stress the fact enough just how nice it is to be able to see a temperature readout, an accurate temperature readout on your system and not have to actually put a thermometer in there to do so. So in a nutshell, these Aquatop titanium aquarium heaters I've had very, very good luck with. Never had an issue with them. And I have multiple systems running these heaters. These are the only heaters that I buy. I I will never buy, I should never say never, but a glass heater again. I'm gonna stick with the titanium ones for the durability. Now I will say, you shouldn't be working in your aquarium with, with any heater plugged in, in in your power heads and pumps. You should turn all those off before you do any maintenance just to avoid the risk of electrical shock. I've never been shocked, but it's possible. So I run all my power heads and um, anything with power heaters to a power strip or a control module where I can easily just flip a switch and kill the whole system. Then I can do my maintenance or whatever I need to do. But I will say, even if you turn these off and say you're gonna take this out to do maintenance on it or something, or you're just working in the area, these things get super hot. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I, I have burnt my fingers on these and they retain the heat very well. So even if you have the, the power off for say a minute, you pull this out of the aquarium, this is still gonna be hot. You need to let it sit for a while and be very careful with it. You can grab it by the, the rubber ends, but if you touch this, I guarantee it is hot enough to burn your fingers. So with that in mind, just keep in mind, I try to place them in sumps and in the aquariums, you know, obviously where coral is not gonna touch them because they get hot enough to damage coral or if you're keeping a planted aquarium, live plants, anything that touches this titanium heater will get burnt when it's on. That's, it, it gets really hot, um, which is good, it effectively heats the aquarium but it will burn you just keep that in mind be very very cautious with them um, I did mention setting the temperature in your aquarium so if you are doing a, a reef aquarium you want to keep the, the temperature what I shoot for is between 77 and 80 degrees for the corals and most corals and, and, and saltwater fish do fine in that range so 77 to 80 degrees, I try to keep mine at right at 78. That's kind of that magic spot that I shoot for. And I try to keep it at that temperature consistently, you know, throughout the aquarium. And these heaters have done a pretty good job of that. I've been very happy with them. So when picking out a heater for your system, how do you know what, what size of heater you need to get? There's a, a general rule of thumb. Heaters are, they're usually measured in watts, so this is a two, 200 watt heater. And the general rule is three to five watts per gallon in your system. And on this box here, it says four aquariums, you know, up to 55 gallons. This heater here, it's the exact same heater, just bigger. It's the, the 500 watt version. And it says that this is good for an aquarium up to 150 gallons. So if you do the math on it, they both fall within that three watt per gallon range. They're fine. When you get up, if you're multiplying by four or five, they get a little above that. Um, with the technology and the thermostats in these heaters, I'm comfortable doing this with my aquariums. I would say if you're not sure on which one to get, let's say, I don't know, let's say your system with the sump, it comes out to be 70 gallons. So you're over the 55. The 200 watt heater, I'm confident in that heater, it would heat your, your, your system just fine. Um, but keep in mind, it's gonna be kicking on more to keep up and it's gonna have longer run time and may cut down on the life of the heater. 
So when it comes to the heaters, I would say go to the next size up. Because with the thermostats, once it reaches your temperature, it's gonna kick off. Unless you buy a cheap heater, which don't do that. It'll kick off and it'll it'll keep the, the temperature up with less runtime on the heater. So you're gonna have less stress on the heaters because they're not running as much. So it's better to, I would say, it's better to oversize on the heater than it is to undersize. Because if you go too low, that heater's gonna be running constantly in your system to try to keep up with, with the heating and keep it where it needs to be. So just a little tip there, it's better to buy one that is a little oversized for your system than undersized. That's, that's my opinion on it, that's what I do. In my frag system here, which I'll show you, I have four aquariums hooked up to it. And I'm actually running the 500 watt heater in the sump and then the 200 watt heater in one of the aquariums as well, just to make sure that they stay at temperature. And I have a lot of water leaving the system, I'll show you, and, and going, you know, 10 feet or so down the wall into another aquarium and coming back. So by, by the time it leaves one system and gets to the other one, you know, it's cooling off in the pipes. So I just added another heater and um, it, it stays at temperature just fine now. Don't have any issue with it. So just real quick, that's, that's my feeling on heaters and go with the titanium ones spend more money you know on your heater it's well worth it that's my simple alarm going off there you go okay I, I shut off my aquarium so that you wouldn't hear just water cascading in the background and my simple alarm started going off so yeah, buy the titanium heaters if if you if you're worried about having a cheap heater, I would be. It, it costs me a lot of money in coral, and I will never buy a cheap heater again. I will always spend more money. So these two are bought retail from a local fish store. The 200 watt was 69.99, and the 500 watt here was 89.99. And I will put links down in the description to where you can find these online. You might be able to find them a little cheaper. But just personally, uh, I'm running these in 10 of my aquariums that I got set up right now and have not had an issue with them. I have been very happy with them. I don't have to worry about temperature at all. Um, when I do my weekly and monthly maintenance, you know, I make sure that they're working. I, I know that they're working because I see this and it tells me the temperature. If, if this drops below you know, your set temperature and your heater light is not on, then you know there's an issue with the heater and you can look into the issue and, and figure out what's going on. But I do like these. Um, if you guys know of any other good heaters, not they don't have to be Aqua Top, you know, any other brands that you guys like, let me know. I'm always willing to try out new products and different things because there's always new stuff coming out on the market. But that's it for, for these titanium heaters. They're, they're not too bad, they're not too expensive, but they are a little price on the pricey side compared to heaters. So I will show you guys a couple of them on set up on my system here. I got them set up and I told you, I will show you what I do with these old heaters. Um, these heaters, I got a couple of them that still, they still heat, but the thermostat died in them, like I said, so they don't shut off. So I'll show you what, what I set up and I do with the old heaters. All right guys, on this system here, I just wanted to show you with the heater, whenever I can, I don't put equipment, you know, up in the display tank. So in this system, I've got, you know, just three power heads up in the display tank. And how I'm doing that, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do it too, is down here in the bottom, I'm running a sump. So I'm able to put my protein skimmer, you know, I got a media reactor there, a little refugium, and you can see my heater. That's the Aquatop Titanium heater again. Kind of got it up against the wall. And like I mentioned, the rubber feet, it's sitting on the sand bed there. So I don't have to worry about it, you know, heating the sand up because it's not touching it. Here is the control box for that heater in the sump. And like I mentioned, 
I hit the temperature probe up here in the main display. So I'm getting readings of the main display. You can see it back there in the corner. I'm getting that temperature reading and I am not getting the reading from the sump. So yes, it's heating the water in the sump and pumping it up, but it's going to heat it to the temperature that I want up here in the display tank. That coral banded shrimp he usually doesn't come out during the day, he usually just comes out at night. Alright, yeah guys, so that's just showing you how I got it set up in the sump down there on that system. And once again, you can kind of see it down there in the corner, the lights are off. I got it laying down there on the sand, but it's raised up, so it's not touching the sand. And this sump feeds an aquarium on the other side there, and then up into the, um, the soft attaching aquarium. So I'll take my, my, my soft corals, the frags, and let them attach to some substrate. This is an extremely low flow aquarium, so they don't get blown around. And after a week or so, they'll be attached to the rubble, and I can glue them onto a fray plug. So I use this tank all the time for attaching soft corals, you know, like mushrooms, and you know, leathers, things like that. And this system here, um, I am running a sump. I'm showing you this one for a reason. And then I've got an anemone tank here set up, growing some rose bubble tip anemones. And I'm using a heater on this system. Same titanium here. I got it tucked back in the back chamber. This is actually an old bio cube that I'm using for this. And then these two tanks are connected. They share the same sump. So this aquarium here is mainly a soft grow out tank where I'm growing the colonies, you know, to fray. And there's the other heater back there. Once again, pretty dirty, showing you things will grow on them. And I need to do a better job of keeping them clean. But it's just so nice being able to see the box on the side there and see the temperature in the aquarium whenever I want just walking by. Super convenient. So. so this one, this is what I'm using currently for my quarantine tank. When um, if I do buy coral from somewhere, I don't throw it right into my systems. It's gotta go to quarantine for a while, make sure it's healthy, no pests or parasites. And this one is not running a sump, but I do have that heater on the glass back there, titanium heater. I'm showing you this one, you can see all the, the algae and stuff that's grown on that heater. I actually need to go in there and clean that off. It's never done anything to affect the performance of that heater, but I think it's probably best practice just to keep it clean. So that was just showing you it's set up there with the control box on the side. So a simple quarantine tank, nothing too fancy. That's how I'm using that heater. All right guys, so one thing I told you, I got all these old heaters where the thermostats went bad and they still heat just fine but the thermostats don't work so I don't trust them in my aquariums. So what I did, this is kind of a rat's nest here I know. I've got four heaters here hung up and they all run to this power strip right here. So when I flip on the power strip, all these heaters have power and they start heating. So when I'm doing my water changes, I've got these buckets here. So I'll fill these buckets up with you know my salt water that I'm doing the water changes for the aquariums and I'll drop a heater in each bucket. Flip the switch and then all four 
of those buckets start heating and I can bring the temperature up. I did mention that the thermostats don't work in these heaters, so I do have to manually check the temperature in the buckets before I um, dump it into my aquarium. But it, it is super convenient, super nice, just to take the old heaters, throw them in the buckets, flip the switch, I can go scrub algae, do whatever other maintenance I'm working on, and I can let these buckets come up, up to temperature all at once. So that, you know, and it doesn't take long, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so, and they're pretty much at temperature, they're ready to go. And I do recommend, you know, heating your water to the correct temperature before placing it into your aquarium. That way you're not, you know, shocking the corals or the fish. And it's just one more thing to eliminate, you know, you, you don't want to stress your corals whenever you don't have to. So that's just one thing that I do with my old heaters, if they still work. I'll use them for this system, just like this, and it seems to have worked out pretty good. So if we swing over here to the frag system, I've got frag tank on top, frag tank here. I've got a tank down here that I'm growing pretty much just soft corals in. And then I've got a tank over here that I am growing bird's nest in. So this whole aquarium, since bird, bird's nest grows fairly quickly, this is the yellow bird's nest, I'm just using this system right here to grow the bird's nest. So the issue that I had, if we look over here, down in the sump was temperature in that bird's nest aquarium. So running the Aquatop titanium heater, you can see the module there. And I've got the heater laying down here on the bottom of the sump with a power head that is blowing water across it to heat more evenly. And I had the sump and I had this freight tank and this freight tank and that 500 watt titanium heater that I showed earlier was heating these two aquariums and the sump just fine didn't have an issue with it where I ran into an issue was when I added this aquarium down there for the softies and the bird's nest aquarium these two aquariums weren't getting up the temperature so the water leaves this freight tank out of that overflow box, and it's kind of hard to see, but it goes into this pipe running along this wall. So that's roughly six feet to the corner here. Then it makes the bend, and it goes about another three feet, and then empties into this system. So by the time the water left the frag tank, came down the wall, and got dumped into this aquarium here, um, it, it, it wasn't staying to temperature and then the water leaves this aquarium through this pipe goes into the salt tank so then by the time it was getting here it was dropping in temperature it just it was too long of a run to keep it keep it up to temperature so I went and I got a 200 watt titanium heater you can see the box here and I got it sitting down right there and it, it's just kind of at the midpoint of the system to where it'll heat the water up again in this tank before it goes back to the other aquarium and then into the sump so it fixed the issue the temperature is staying consistent through all the aquariums here and I don't really have to worry about it and I will note I have the suction cups and the, and the rubber pads here I don't let these heaters touch the actual glass on the aquarium because like I mentioned before these heaters get super hot they'll burn your fingers and then you know they'll heat up the glass on the aquarium and it potentially could you know stress the glass and cause a crack they get super hot so do not let let the actual heater touch the glass of the aquarium or coral or an overflow box it'll melt an overflow box anything else it's best practice to keep them keep them off of other surfaces. So with the box here, um, you got your power button like I showed you. There, 
you hit it and it turns it off I'm sorry you hold it down and it'll turn the system off you have to hold it for two two or three seconds press it once it'll turn it back on so you got your, your temperature here it doesn't do anything you have to hit the power button it'll start blinking then you can set your temperature to what, whatever you want to keep it at now I'm keeping this one set to 80 on the higher end yeah so it's set to 80 it's dropped to 79 you can see that it is currently heating the aquarium and the green power light means that you have power here so all in all those two heaters are keeping all of these aquariums heated it, it's right about 79 degrees I have these two heaters set at 80 and it keeps the temperature consistent 78 to 79 between all of them and I've been happy with that you can see some of the corals while we're here Scalemia. We do have some nice A cans over here in the corner we got up on the website. If you guys want to check it out. Alright guys, well that does it for this video once again. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, leave your comments down below. If you have any questions, you know, leave them in the comments or send me a direct message and I'll do my best to get back with you. Thanks for watching. Bye.